welcome back to my little channel and so tonight we are i've got a couple of things planned for us first of all first of all we're gonna um do some nail art because i have a gel competition at school this week i don't have too many supplies to work with so we're just gonna have to work with what i've got and um that may be you know just kind of fooling around and seeing what we can come up with thinking outside the box of what's typically done with things. Um, we'll just kind of see where tonight takes us art wise. And I'm glad to have you along for the ride. If you like this, please hit the like button and the subscribe. I would love to have you along with my journey. You can follow me here. And also my links to Instagram and TikTok will be in the information below. So tonight we have a special series. It's going to be called True Crime Nail Time. And tonight we're going to discuss what happened to Stephen Smith. If that name sounds familiar, there was a very popular documentary early, earlier this year uh, that came out on Netflix. It was about the Murdoch murder mysteries. It's uh, involving the case of Alec Murdoch, who murdered his wife, Maggie, and his son, Stephen. He was recently convicted about a month ago. Um, and... There is some connection with his family with Stephen Smith. So Stephen Smith was a young gay boy. He was 19 years old. He was a nursing student. He was very beautiful. I'll actually insert some photos here. He kind of reminds me of a young Anna Nicole Smith, like in her guest days. He's just very, very pretty. And from listening to the family and friends speak, it sounds like he was very likable and it was just impossible not to like this guy. So, back in July of 2015, Stephen, his body was found on a dark road in South Carolina in Hampton County. His body was found in the middle of the road. He was completely dressed. His clothing was not torn. His shoes, although they weren't laced up, they were on his feet good and snug um he looked like he was just kind of laying in the road except he did have um some bruises and contusions to the head um he didn't have any any scrapes or anything that looked like he had been ran over by a car and there weren't any skid marks in the road or or oil stains um it looked the the scene was very suspicious investigators from their notes they're reporting that um, they were certainly suspicious of homicide. And um, although the medical invest the medical examiner would say that he was hit by a car and that it was an accidental hit and run, um, notes from the investigators and listening to his family and friends talk, um, this just wasn't typical of Stephen. There's no reason why he would have been out in the middle of that road in the dead of night that night. Um, they say that, that possibly his car ran out of gas. His car was found three miles away from where his body was. It was pulled up on the side of the road. And um, the gas cap and tank were open. And the, you know, the little cap on it was screwed off and hanging off. Um, inside of his car was his wallet. Now, he did have his phone on him. And it was actually still in his pocket when they found him. Um, just very suspicious. And what, what caused them to look back into this investigation was that during the Murdaugh murders, as police and investigators were investigating that crime, some information or tip must have come in from somewhere because police out of nowhere changed this investigation from an accidental hit and run to a murder investigation and they, reop they reopened it. And certainly the family is very happy to see that this is actually going somewhere and it seems like they're getting some real answers. Recently, they exhumed his body and performed a second autopsy. And it's being told to us that with the information that they got from the first autopsy and now this information from the second autopsy and some other 
um, information that has come in. They're very pleased with what they were able to gather and they feel very confident that they're going to have answers to this homicide and that we're going to see um, some finality come, which is great because I'm really happy for the family that they're going to finally get some answers because it's certainly been a long time. And um, Stephen, his association also with the Murdoch family is that it's said that he was possibly friends with the younger Murdaws, maybe Paul Murdaw or his brother uh, Buster. Information on that's a little sketchy at this point. I'm sure that the investigators have a good handle on exactly the flow of events. Uh, it seems like they've got some informants who have come forward and um, they're just not releasing that information at this time. But um, let's see. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we covered. Let's see here. Hold on one second. Oh, so let me tell you this. So um, I read that Dr. Kenny Kinsey, he's a forensic crime scene analyst expert. He says that there's only four to five things that could have happened in Stephen's case. Either Stephen was killed elsewhere and dropped off on that road in that position. Or two, that he was killed at the location where he was found. Three, he could have been struck by a vehicle by someone who knew that they hit him. And they've just been covering it up since. Four, he could have been struck by someone in a vehicle or something hanging off of a vehicle. And that person has no idea that they hit anyone, which is kind of hard to believe because um, it's been quite a while. And, and they've really been, you know, hitting the streets for some information. So I would think that somebody would have had a clue that they hit something that night. Uh, let's see. Oh, or five. Um, something could have been... Well, we kind of talked about this. Something could have been put out the, the window of a car and hit him that way. Um, now, there was... This, this part is a little strange, but um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill you in on it. Um, so, a note from the file mentions that a tip came in from a man who claimed he was instructed to pass information on to the investigators because Randy Murdaugh told him to. His stepson struck Stephen with the car on accident, supposedly, and he overheard them, him and his friends, having a conversation about what they should do. Um... So this was, we haven't really heard much more about that. And, and I'm certainly interested to hear exactly the full details of that. Um, but so SLED also says that they've been reinvestigating Stephen's murder. Um, and hang on here. I'm going to make sure I cover everything. Oh, I did want to mention, this was something else that I read. Um, you know how we talked about the car, Stephen's car that night. Um, they said that the gas, the, the gas tank cap was hanging off the side, that the vehicle's battery was functioning, but the car wouldn't start. So as far as what was going on with Stephen's vehicle that night, really, that's all the information I've been able to get so far. Um, certainly... I'm sure investigators have more information and we will hear that sooner or later, hopefully sooner. And let's see here. Oh, I did want to let you know. Um, so Stephen was laid to rest again. Uh, let's see. It's been about two weeks now. He was laid, laid to rest for the second time. And his mother, Sandy Smith, is allocating a $35,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. It sounds like, with the information they're getting, though, it sounds like that's that they're on their way there already. For more information on the Stephen Smith case, 
There are several articles available online. Also, I know several YouTubers are covering it. I will also keep you updated on any further information that comes available to us. I'll definitely stay up to date on his case. So I will go ahead and let you finish watching our art video here, our little nail time. And I did want to say that I will sort out the lighting situation. Bear with me. I know it's it's not good in this video. Um, I just have to wait till I get some more finances under my belt so I can try to fix that situation. If you guys know anything about lighting, if if there's something that you recommend, um, please list the information below or you can also email me. My contact information will be in the notes. I'll also list the products that I'm using in the comments as well or in the information under the video. And um, yeah, so I will sort that out. I'm sure I'll watch several YouTube videos this week and see what I can find out is going to be the best lighting and I'll fix the audio as well. That might take a little bit longer. I'm just gonna have to go at a speed that my wallet can handle. And okay, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and I will talk to you soon.